Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this very sunny bank holiday, the Friday the 8th of May. Today we celebrate victory in Europe 75 years ago and um, we also remember Mother Julian of Norwich who was a spiritual writer and mystic of the early 1400s. So let's pray. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O oh Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you, were ransom, you ransomed your people from Egypt, and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Psalm 33. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for it is good for the just to sing praises. Praise the Lord with the lyre on the ten-stringed harp sing praise sing for him a new song play skillfully with shouts of praise for the word of the lord is true and all his works are sure he loves righteousness and justice the earth is full of the loving kindness of the lord by the word of the lord were the heavens made and all their host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers up the waters of the sea, and in a water skin, as in a water skin, and lays up the deep of his treasury. Let all the earth fear the Lord, stand in awe of him, all who dwell in the world. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to naught. He frustrates the designs of the people. But the counsel of the Lord shall endure forever, and the designs of his heart from generation to generation. Happy the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people he has chosen for his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the children of the earth. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. No king is saved by the might of his host, no warrior delivered by his strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance, for all its strength cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait in hope for his steadfast love. To deliver their soul from death and to feed him in time of famine, my soul waits longingly for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him. In his holy name have we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us as we have set our hope on you. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Amen. Feed your people, Lord, with your holy word and free us from the emptiness of our wrongful desires that we may sing the new song of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Exodus 35. So everyone in the community of Israel left the presence of Moses. Then they came back, everyone whose heart was roused, whose spirit was freely responsive, bringing offerings to God for the building of the tent of meeting, furnishing it for worship and making the holy vestments. They came, both men and women, all the willing spirits among them, offering brooches, earrings, rings, necklaces, anything made of gold, offering up their gold jewellery to God. And anyone who had blue, purple and scarlet fabrics, fine linen, goat's hair, tanned leather and dolphin skins brought them. Everyone who wanted to offer up silver or bronze as a gift to God brought it. Everyone who had acacia wood could be used in the work brought it. All the women skilled at weaving brought their weavings of blue and purple and scarlet fabrics and their fine linens. And all the women who were gifted in spinning spun the goat's hair. The leaders brought onyx and other precious stones for setting in the ephod and the breastpiece. They also brought spices and olive oil for lamp oil anointing oil and incense. Every man and woman in Israel whose heart was moved, uh, sorry, whose heart moved them freely to bring something for the work that God through Moses had commanded them to make, brought it, a voluntary offering to God. Moses told the Israelites, see, God has selected Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Ur, of the tribe of Judah. He's filled him with the spirit of God, with skill, ability and know-how for making all sorts of things, to design and work in gold, silver and bronze, to carve stones and set them, to carve wood, working in every kind of skilled craft. And he's also made him a teacher. He and Aholiab, son of Ahismach, the tribe of the tribe of Dan. He's gifted them with the know-how needed for carving, designing, weaving and embroidering in blue, purple and scarlet fabrics and in fine linen. They can make anything and design anything. Bezalel and Aholiab along with everyone who God has given the skill and know-how for making everything involved in the worship of the sanctuary as commanded by God are to start work. Moses summoned Bezalel and Aholiab along with all whom God had gifted with the ability to work skillfully with their hands. The men were eager to get started and engage in the work. They took from Moses all the offerings that the Israelites had brought for the work of constructing the sanctuary. The people kept on bringing in their free will offerings morning after morning. <laughs> That's gone a bit wrong. I can't read it. <laughs> All the artisans who were at work making everything, constructing the sanctuary came, one after another, to Moses saying, the people are bringing more than enough for us to do this work that God has commanded us to do. So Moses sent out orders through the camp 
men, women, no more offerings for the building of the sanctuary. The people were ordered to stop bringing offerings. There was plenty of material for all the work to be done. Enough and more than enough. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for God's love has no end. O oh, the Lord is risen. Alleluia. Sing out and praise the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my son. God has been my saviour. O oh, the Lord is risen. Alleluia. Sing out and praise the Lord. Alleluia. Our gospel reading is from Luke 4. Jesus returned to Galilee, powerful in the spirit. News that he was back spread through the countryside. He taught in their meeting places to everyone's acclaim and pleasure. He came to Nazareth where he had been reared. As he did on the, always did on the Sabbath, he went to the meeting place where he stood up to read he was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it was written. God's spirit is on me. He has chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor, sent me to announce pardon to prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the burdened and battered free, to announce this is God's year to act. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the assistant and sat down. Every eye in the place was on, was on him intent. Then he started in. You've just heard scripture make history. It came true just now in this place. All who were there watching and listening were surprised at how well he spoke. But they also said, isn't this Joseph's son? The one we've known since he was a youngster? He answered, I suppose you're going to quote the proverb, Doctor, go heal yourself. Do here in your, in your hometown what we heard you did in Capernaum. Well, let me tell you something. No prophet is ever welcomed in his hometown. Isn't it a fact that there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah? during that three and a half years of drought when famine devastated the land. But the only widow whom Elijah was, was sent was in um, Sarepta in Sidon. And there were many lepers in Israel at the time of Elisha, but the only one cleansed was Naaman the Syrian. That set everyone in the meeting place seething with anger. They threw him out, banishing him from the village, then took him to a mountain cliff at the edge of the village to throw, out, throw him to his doom. But he gave them the slip and was on his way. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Christ Jesus was in the form of God but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant and was born in human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Gracious and loving God, just as Isaiah spoke your word to, pr 
preach good news to the poor and to proclaim freedom to the captives because your Holy Spirit was in him. So the brave men and women of 1939 to 45 were called by their country to do their duty. And we shout out our thanks and our praise and our appreciation to them and to you, dear Lord, for their protection. And we praise you that some are still alive with us today. Thank you, Lord, that they are awesome examples of steadfastness and your love and all the goodness of you is shown within them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh Lord, we honour these people as we honour you, that you keep our our country and the world safe and protect us. Protect us from all evil. And we pray in the words of Julian of Norwich that all shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Our hope is in you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amazing Lord, we thank you for the scientists and medical experts leading the cabinet. Keep them safe and protected and guide them in their work. Lead them to truth and right decisions. We pray that the government make the right choices to continue to keep us safe and save lives at all costs. And we also pray, Lord, that on this sunny day of celebration, everyone obeys the rules and guidance to keep themselves and those around them safe and free from this virus. Help us Lord especially when we feel frustrated and anger and general depression of all that's going on. May you be our guidance. May you be our protection and our love. Give us peace, Lord. And help us to live our lives as fully as we can, keeping really close to you. as we remember the hardships and difficulties the people during the Second World War lived by because they knew their lives depended on it. Let us look to them for our example of how we should be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Most holy God, the ground of our beseeching, who through your servant Julian revealed the wonders of your love, grant that as we are created in your nature and restored by your grace, our wills may be so made one with yours, that we may come to see your, you face to face and gaze on you forever. 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so with longing we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for joining me, everyone. Um, I hope you enjoy today. And I think there's lots of things on the tally that you can um, join in with the celebration. So it should be a really good day. And I shall see you again at 5 p.m. Thank you. Bye-bye.